Hey, welcome back everyone. So in this one, I'm going to sculpt a nose in Blender. And uh, I just absolutely love this program. So this is a 4.3 update. This is a powerhouse of a software. It's open source. You can download it. It's free. They do recommend donations. I, re I think it's a great idea to support um, business models like this that give such versatile, powerful programs to the public so that we can make stuff and not have the same reservations like i can't afford that software so i can't get into that you know maya comes to mind super expensive uh blender almost as powerful maybe not as powerful but it's it's getting better and better so in this one i just want to show how i utilize it to make uh you know basic 3d models i brought in a drawing that i did a sketch see here i'm going into the uh, item properties of fix the rotation actually end up modeling this to the side instead of the front view, which, you know, that's why this isn't a tutorial. This is just to show you that even with uh, my basic knowledge of this program, I'm able to get, you know, a relatively decent sculpt. If you can sculpt a nose, you can sculpt uh, an entire face. I mean, it's there's a lot more to it, obviously, but all the same rules kind of apply initially to get you going. Edge control, resolution or polygon density control things like that and i'll i'll tip off a couple of those things as we go uh, in this particular video i'm just using remesh so remesh is essentially where you hit r on the keyboard you'll see a grid pop up you drag it left to right you can add your polygon flow visually i did add a subdivision modifier by the way just to give the initial uh, sphere uh, some some density but then from there, I'll just use Remesh. You've got Dyntopo. There's all sorts of ways to go about this, but uh, I really like the Remesh feature. So here, just adding in some volume to the nose, paying attention to the reference, but not too strict. I just wanted something up there to kind of guide me. Uh, keep in mind, reference is easy to add in this software. You just go Shift-A, go to your reference, drop it in, and you can maneuver it forward, back along the, uh, the various axes these and um yeah it's it's really just a great program for sculpting i at first when i got into it i struggled I, I just wasn't feeling as good about the process the remeshing was a big part of it so for me when i go to sculpt something if if i go to smooth it and you'll see i start smoothing here so at first my approach is this add some some uh volume with a clay brush and this one is called clay strips and then start grabbing the mesh. That's what I'm doing here. I got the grab brush highlighted and you start moving that around and you can do a lot with that. In fact, it's really helpful to jump into these sculpts with a very low, big blocky polygon view, right? And then get used to moving those points around with the grab brush and then see what you can get. Explore that a lot because you can do base meshes of anything, really simplistic box modeling, not box modeling, but it's it feels like you're box modeling, but with sculpting. And do that with all sorts of shapes around you that you're looking to create, anatomy, people, ob you know, objects around the house, whatever. And then slowly work into sculpting. And when you get into the sculpting part, and by that I mean you know more detailed sculpting, you know, this is a crease or a draw brush, sort of like uh, Damien Standard and, and ZBrush, and you're cutting into it. And, and, you know, you're doing more smoothing and more finer details, right? Well, that's where you, you need more control over the mesh. And this is what I'm doing. I'm hitting R, I'm scrolling back and forth, getting that visual representation, and then I'm hitting Control-R to remesh. And what that does is it uh, gives you that tighter density, and it's all about finding that balance where you go to hold shift and start smoothing and it doesn't destroy the edges that you tried building in. Or maybe it does in some areas, but you get a nice blend in others. You know, it's kind of a back and forth battle. And that's where you use masking as well. So sometimes you're going to get, you know, maybe the right edge somewhere and you can't control the edge somewhere else. But you got to remember you have masking features and they make your life a lot easier as a beginner sculptor. Uh, and I'll show the and I'll show you that here in a minute. So certain softwares I've sculpted in, and just like drawing programs, I felt like I had a, a better sense of control, right? Well, in that case, I probably didn't use the masking features in certain areas. 
So I go to do the nostrils here and I'm like, why, why am I losing my edge every time I, I hold shift and I smooth? Well, it's because it's the settings are different here. Maybe the strength on the top left needs to be adjusted down. Maybe I need to use an entirely different brush. Maybe I can recreate this brush, who knows? But since I don't know all those things right now, and if you don't know those things, you can use your masking features. They're, they really do make it not brainless or not super simple, but a lot easier. The tricky thing about the mask is just remembering that it does project through and cuts back through to the other side. You'll see when I do it here in a minute. So you gotta like turn the model certain ways and kinda get a feel for how the mask is gonna project through. But it's not that bad, it's, it's pretty effective. You actually don't have to hold shift uh, in the mask with uh, Blender, it just keeps adding. And remember that you can reverse the selection uh, by holding control. It'll probably vary if you're using like a PC or something, I don't know, and then to drop the selection, it's Alt-M, and again, this is on a Mac. Uh, but you'll notice that I miss the mark and I keep tilting it, I keep moving it around so that if it projects through, it doesn't hit uh, an area that I need, but it's, you know, it's, it would probably be better to go to orthographic mode. But now with that uh, isolated, I can really control those edges, right? I can add volume uh, freely in these areas. I don't have to worry about it so much. So uh, masking is just a, a lot better way to approach sculpting, I think. Again, if you don't understand the complexity of the brushes, Notice too, I'm, I'm using the grab brush and I'm moving it against the mask. I really like that for creating certain kind of folds in the skin, striations, uh, again, volume control, maneuvering the volumes against uh, other aspects of, uh, of the work. And uh, now I'm just cycling it around, looking for other ways to maneuver and see imperfections to it. And now I'm gonna mask the, uh, the bridge of the nose and work on that. So. Uh, keep in mind too that with the masking feature you can soften it and sharpen it again Those are all under the features right there under mask and uh, Now I'll take uh, brushes and try to carve into this a little bit more. So again, it'll give me that More defined edge on the bridge of the nose So another thing I wanted to mention in today's video I really struggled to feel as comfortable sculpting in this software and I avoided it for a while uh, but with the new update, I just felt like, no, I really need to learn this. They just they just keep impressing me with all the things they're adding to the software. Uh, and the grease pencil alone is amazing. I want to do more with that in 2D animation as well. But the, um, so I, I felt compelled to try again, try harder. And essentially, one of the big things was mapping the middle mouse wheel to my stylus. So I'm using a Sense Labs tablet. Uh, I'll link it below if you want to check it out. It's a great tablet. Uh, it's a you know sits on the desk. It's not a screen tablet. And I map one of the buttons to the middle mouse wheel. And so this gives you really three options. It gives you the ability to click it and pan around quickly around the um, the uh, model without having to grab your mouse uh, as much and click that middle mouse wheel. And then also by using uh, hitting shift first, you can move the screen around you know like keeping the view straight to you but moving the screen around so it's another form of panning but not circling around the model right that's just clicking the button itself and then uh there's also clicking the control button holding it and then clicking that you know button that's mapped to the middle mouse button and what that does allows you to zoom in and out there's actually one more even uh it's holding the option button uh, at least on a mac uh, which I believe is an alt button. And uh, so essentially what that one does, it allows you to now snap to each one of the orthographic views. So I don't use that one as much, but I should be because it's really important to get used to modeling and orthographic views. It, there's just certain things that are easier. And so anyways, mapping that to the stylus, I should have did it a long time ago. It, it's, it made it a lot easier to sculpt and stay in the program and not get distracted or burdened by feeling compelled to always reach for the mouse in a way where you're kind of reaching across yourself. So anyways, it's uh, it was another big one, so I figured I should share it in this video. So I've, I've got a lot to learn in this software, but I'm very excited by it. It's, again, so extremely powerful. I'm doing hard surface modeling, like laying out rooms for comic panels and things like that. So I'll be bringing you lots of cool stuff. 
But the reason why I like to model very basic things like this is I feel like it helps me even with my art, as I've mentioned in other, other videos. And it gives me reference material that I've created myself that I can turn to any angle and again, uses my own reference. So as I learn more, I'll bring more videos to you uh, with Blender. And uh, just let me know what you think and what you want to learn more about or what you'd like to know. Uh, and it doesn't have to be learning. It could just be like, hey, dude, sculpt to this. I would like to see how you go about the process. You know, it doesn't have to be uh, me trying to teach you things. because I, I have a lot to learn here. But uh, it's such a vast program. The possibilities are just limitless. So let me know what you think. Good luck with your art. Good luck with your sculpting. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching and bye for now.